Good we're afternoon. Back. We're here. Happy Wednesday. Hello. Dynamic duo. Dynamic duo. And it is actually two of us. It is us. Yes. So. Yes. So this is awesome. I'm yeah. so glad. It's always so. nice when we can have um, somebody else participate and join in when one of us is not available. But it's always nice to be together for sure. Yeah. And today we're talking about Lindy's Magicals. We are. We are. Lindy's Powders. I'm just quickly trying to set up my computer so that we can see, see your comments. comments. So for whoever's with us live, thanks for being here. And be sure to ask us questions along the way. We're just getting set up so that we can see your comments. And then, of course, my computer's being a jerk. Yeah, so just uh, bear with us. Okay, thanks. Hey, hey Carolyn, you're here. Nice. I'm good. Okay. Hi, Carolyn. Good. See We're people. live. We see people. Okay. Yes. Why? 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 Why are we freezing? This okay. is like the Mac Daddy of Splat Mats, too, we have at the demo bar, which is awesome. Which is necessary for what we're showing. Yes. So we but if you don't go without it, so that's part of our scramble at the beginning. If you don't have a paper ending Splat Mat, you need one. They I are agree. the best things, honestly. They're amazing. I have two or three, actually. For cleanup? Yeah, I do, too. I have one on my, like, magnetic board. And, yeah. And you can cut them into pieces to fit whatever you need. Yeah, so, you bet. Anyways, it's a must-have, for sure. Okay. Hello. Hello. So. Hi, hi again. Yes. Hello. Demo deal. Talk about what the deal is. 25% off today and tomorrow on the Lindy's Magicals. So you can uh, add to your stash. There the are pretty, multiple pretty powders. ones of these. Yeah, they come in great assortments. They've got fun names too. Yeah, so I grabbed this one because I actually don't have it. Wow. And I'm going to open it for you. So I want to. I mentioned on our live this morning that these are not easy to get into. So I was going to show you how to make it easy. So this one's, the reason I fell in love with this one is they seem to love Canadians. So, yes. Um, this is Polite Northern Lights. So it's Polite People Purple. Maple syrup bronze, emerald A, <laughs> Canadian bacon blush, and of course, my heart, hockey puck black. So, what you do is just grab your brush, shove it in the top, and turn it. Boom, done. If you don't do that, you struggle like crazy and you never get into you your magic. You get your fingers underneath it. It's and crazy. Whatnot. But yeah, yeah it's, all you need is just a little leverage. Just put your brush into the handle and just use it as a. Lever. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, big words. And in you go. Oh, Nancy's here. So in the <laughs> canisters, you get two, three, five little jars. Okay. Each, keep in mind, a little goes a long way. Yes. So but I will show you. Forever. Okay. So these aren't included in the demo deal. Um, they have come out with this shaker packaging. So what's the difference between this and this? Um, well, I think only certain colors are available this way. It's one thing. But basically, Lindy's powders are Lindy's powders. The packaging doesn't change things much, but you get double the powder in these. And when I show it to you, I'm going to show you I like this packaging a little bit better because it's got this sweet shaker. And I like the little jars. I do like the little jars. Yeah. yeah. And I was just going to show everybody. So I tend to take my magicals out of the tubes and I use my distress storage tins for them because then of course then they're so pretty you can see everything you can stack them so I just have some bits in yeah. here so I do love so my tins I, I use them for like everything. I have collection myself see yeah J just a few and this is a totally Tiffany bag. <laughs> yeah but I'm actually was wondering about these because um, I might switch anyway I just threw my stuff in here for a demo but the little jars, this is the new one. So these ones we just got in. So they aren't on for the demo deal right now. But I still highly recommend taking a look at them. Any of our Lindy's. So these ones, in they're calling them the Painter's Palette. Um, they come in this little shaker. And then if you look, it's like a little salt shaker. Which is really fun for some of those techniques we're going to show Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a way around this, so don't throw these out. These are fabulous. Yeah. It's just just one of those things where you just say to yourself, wow. So then the other thing to know in the Lindy's is... Always have a wet wipe handy. Right? <laughs> this. Okay, it's very stainy. Okay, so you're going to want an apron. You're going to want... Um, 
if you are if you don't like it all over your hands, have your scrubby soap or some and gloves. And I'm a clean crafter. I don't really love the mess, but when I'm working with this, I kind of just say, you know what? I'm gonna get it's my hands of it. messy, my tabletop messy. But then I have wet wipes handy, clean up as I go so I don't transfer this powder onto something else. Right. And then I use my scrubby soap on my hands afterwards and no problem. All yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. So they come in. Embrace the powder. Yeah. Okay. So they come in three sort of. So this is one of the painter's palette ones. This is called Vinnie's View. And I'm going to open it because I plan to buy it too. Because I don't need, I need more. Well, of course you do. I do. I need more. It looks like that to me. I thought that's what it was. I might need five tins. But anyway. So, these ones in the painter's palette are flat. What does that mean? That means that they haven't put a shimmer into them. Okay? But the ones that are in um, the canisters, so they come like this. They stay shimmer. Or so what they've done is there's a highly pigment stainy powder in both of these, but if it says shimmer, they've added a mica, a glittery mica to it. So then the next third one that I wanted just to show for you to be aware of is there is one that they came out with called Glitz Magicals. So they came out in a, another canister like this. And they have rose gold, silver, glitzy gold. These are pure glitz. There is really not a ton of color. It's more about the shimmer on those. So that's something to tell you about with these. So there are differences in them for sure. Yeah. You betcha. So hey, then the other hello, thing. Hello, everybody. I'm just saying hi. We're getting lots of um, hellos. You are. Awesome. Yes. So the other thing I just wanted to quickly mention is these are from a company called Lindy's Gang. That's why Lindy's Magical. Um, they do have sprays, uh, which we do not carry. And I think that that's not a big deal because you can make your own sprays out of these. So I just grab a mini mister and I fill it up with water and I add a little powder. And so this one is Shabby Turbine Teal. And I'd actually only put a temporary label on there because I'll use it up and change it out to another one later. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, Linda was just asking about what a splat mat is. So a splat mat is just a Teflon sheet. Um, it's easy to clean up. It's heat resistant. I do a ton of my mixed media or ink splattering and whatnot on it. So Super easy to clean yeah. up. Yes. So we've got these paper and ink ones. They are 19.75 inches by 16.25 inches for 1875. So that's the splat mat. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Yeah, that's a must. Yep. That's a must. All right. Do we have any questions about the Lindy's before we get started here? Hello, everybody. Hi, oh, hi, look hi. at all these people. I'm so glad you joined us. Yes. We're about to get a little bit messy. A little bit. Which is far more up your alley than mine. I um, think it's super fun. But it's super fun. Um, so what are some of the tools that we like to use for magicals, okay. for the Lindy's? What kind of stuff do you recommend? I like to have, mine is a bit wet, so it normally fans out nicely. But I like fan a brush, fan brush yeah. or a mop brush. But any brush will do. And I do like working with, a, for most techniques, I want it dry. So I'll have a dry brush ready. I like to have a palette of some sort available. So this is our one that we have available in store. It's the Flower Dish 6 inch 7 well. It's awesome. I just have a little ceramic one that I'm going to use today. Similar idea. In fact, look how much bigger ours is. Even more Lindy's Magic. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I use also the Waffle Flower Mat that holds your mini distress inks. Uh, this right. Julia enabled me from Monday Night Live from last week. That's a great Actually, idea. Actually, yeah, it works fabulous. I've had multiple different colors in here, and then I just take it to the sink and rinse it out. Yeah. So that's that's another great tool. Mm -hmm. 
Um, definitely a mat, definitely some wet wipes. I also like to use, I do believe we still have these in stock. I just forgot to check. Oh yeah. Um, a tiny little spoon. This is a nouveau kind of double ended spoon. So I find this really handy for taking some of the powders um, out of my jars. Too. Yeah. Because you do yeah. want a little bit. You don't. A little goes a long there's way no with these. Yeah, there's no shaker on this one. So even if you try to do a, a just a really light tap tap, you know you're you going to end up with it. more powder than you anticipated. It just, that's inevitable. It happens. And I always have, um, same thing, I love a fan brush, which I forgot to bring mine today. Yeah. Um, a detail paint brush, and then generally something I can use for bigger uh, swashes Swashy, and washing. whatnot. Um, and I generally just leave this one in my my water my water jar. So. You betcha. Yeah, so you really betcha. not much. And then, of course, you want some good um, mixed media paper. So. Yeah. We're, today we're using the Vicki Booten uh, Foundations paper in white and black. Super. The Creative Scrapbooker Super Stock is great for that. Any of your Distress Heavy Stocks. Anything, of course, that just works for mixed media because you're going to be applying wet medium as well. Yes, 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 yes. Because what makes the Lindy stick? You need a wet medium. So yes. you need you're water. activating the yes. stickiness with the water. Yeah, so that's how that works. Or another medium. Oh, I'm getting some hellos. Hi, everybody. Yes, I was off for a bit there. Um, we have a sick dog who is our, you know, our family member. Um, it was really scary for us. She is home now and on the road to recovery, but it's a long haul. So thank you. And I'm here. And yeah. So anyways. I'm glad you're here too. Yeah. Okay. Let's just show, I'm going to show a couple samples. Before sure. Before we get started with our actual demo. And I'm just going to kind of talk about them while we go, okay? Awesome. And so, of course, we're here to show you a few of our ideas just to kind of get you inspired. But go to the Lindy's Facebook page, the Lindy's YouTube, uh, Instagram. The ideas are endless, and it will just, you know, start you down a path of creativity. So yeah. I always like to say use social media. It is your friend in a lot of ways. Um, go there. The ideas, really, like... I, I just go to YouTube. Generally, if I pick a new product that I purchase, I go to YouTube, type it in, and then watch endless videos for tips and tricks. You betcha. And then make it my own. Okay, so on this card, so I'm just going to show this, see if you can see that nice and close. That's a stunner. Yes. This was, um, we might be out of this one, not sure. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just, uh, it was an acrylic stamp from All in Create. I stamped it on vellum and heat embossed it in clear. So I always use VersaFine black um, ink, just for those of you who haven't heard me say that a hundred times already. It's my favorite ink for heat embossing, especially if I'm going to heat emboss with clear over top because the black holds its punch. Ah. So that's what I've done here. So I just heat emboss the image in black on vellum and then those pretty shiny colors, which I hope you're getting on the camera there, was simply colored in with my magicals and a wet paintbrush. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to demonstrate that as well. And this bit of texture on the back here, um, this was using a stencil and some opaque Ranger Distress paste that I had just put down on my mats, which I'm going to demo as well. Put in a little bit of the powder, mixed it up, and I came up with a custom color. Sweet. And it's got some texture to it. It dries beautiful, and there's still that bit of shine in there because I use the Magicals. So remember, it's got that mica in it. Yeah. So those yeah. are two really fast, easy ways to use your powders. And the it, results are stunning, especially in person. There's just a, yeah. so much shine to that. Yeah, and what I can see in here is if you look at her matte medium it changed color it's yes. not floating in there yeah it's it's stained the medium so it becomes it's the a, new color exactly a very cool very pigmented color yeah. um just some other ideas here this one was done using this um just a wash of color so i've taken my paintbrush in the water uh, picked up some of the powders and just done a wash Sweet. along the back and then once it dries pretty fast too because of the mica in there too yeah um and then i just splattered on you know kind of the little bits that were left off my mat splattered it on so then i have a shiny um, background ready for some more layering on mm -hmm. this was just i wanted to try um use two colors in this one so i'm going to play with this one and put something on there of course but you get the idea like you can create your own custom 
background and custom colors by mixing some of the powders as well. Um, just hold these ones up quick. So these are just some fun backgrounds using um, two methods. So like I said, Lorene likes her magicals too. So I said, Lorene, what's your favorite way that you like to use them? She goes, well, sometimes I like to spritz and splatter, but sometimes I like to splatter and spritz. So it's no, true. It just depends on your mood. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes you can just put down your uh, Lindy's Dry onto your cardstock and then mist it with water or brook drag your brush through it. Yep. Or the other way around. You can spritz your cardstock first and then drop in your powders and work with it that way. Okay? Um, this one was just, this is the before. I heat embossed a um, Stampers Anonymous stamp on a piece of the cardstock with the same thing, black VersaFine ink with the clear powder. And then on this one, I colored it in with the Lindy's Magicals and my paintbrush. Sorry about the noise off camera. I'm See, getting yeah. something ready for you. It's just a really pretty shine. And then I thought, because um, I, I was just finished coloring this last night, I'm gonna just splatter it with some gold uh, Dina Wakely gloss spray. It really holds its uh, content color as well. Just thought that'd be really pretty there. Okay, so just to show you quickly what sort of Heather was talking about the spritz and spray and the spray and spritz. And I wanna talk about this one too. Oh, well, that one looks super fun. Okay, so I've got two here. One I'm going to actually, I'm gonna keep this one dry. They will reactivate Rhonda. So when they're dry, they will, they can reactivate. Oh, but while Rhonda's asking about that, the best way to stop that on any of your mixed media projects. If you, you brought glaze to Yes. Me? So oh my goodness. If you want to ensure whatever your background is, your, your beautiful creation, if you want to ensure that stays before you add on more medium, more wet medium, um, if you want to splatter, say, white paint on there and you want that white to stay white, mm -hmm. take your Distress Micro Glaze Everybody needs this in their stash as well. I use a handle with a dome foam because it fits perfectly in. Oh, Pick sure. some up. And then you just And again, a rub. little goes a long way. You don't need a ton of this. Nope. A little but goes a long way. I actually have a technique ways. to show you later with this. Oh, good. Well, it's super fun. Super fun. Okay, Yvette's asking, how does Lindy's compare with the infusions? All right, so the number one thing to know about infusions is they put walnut in all of them. So you're always gonna have a bit of a brown fleck in there. Um, not to mention um, the color when you can explode into other colors. And that does happen with the Lindy's Magical, but not quite as much, but technique wise, interchangeable. So yes. it has to do with I'd say the color. finished, yes, yeah. the color and the finished product. Right. Yes. So there's just a pure color, um, magicals. There's no uh, walnut, brown. Oh, I just sprayed Heather. <laughs> brown, brown base to this. So that's the difference with the infusions. You will find that walnut base kind of color yeah. throughout all of the infusions. Yeah. Okay. So on this particular, I just cut up some Vicky Booten paper and all I did was just pre-wet it, okay? So using one of the brushes that I like, I'm not gonna use this one. This is actually the one I would normally use as a fan brush, but had to wash it after using it last night, so it's still a little moist. But I just grab a brush and I just tap it and let it explode in the water. While you're creating Nancy, Monica would like to know, how does the Lindy's compare to the Perfect Pearls? Perfect pearls are a straight pigment. They require perfect medium to stick. Whereas Lindy's has a fixative in it. So you don't require another, it can, I can just dilute it with water and use it as a watercolor. Perfect pearls, you would still need to add something else to it. To get it to adhere. Yeah. But you could use perfect pearls with like your distress oxide ink while it's still wet. Correct. And it will mostly adhere Correct. to that. Correct, because you're adding it to the Distress Oxide, which has a fix to it. Right. Okay, so you can put it in matte medium. Yes. Yeah, and then Joe's asking about color burst. Again, interchangeable color bursts, I think, are a more pure color. If you look at this Lindy's, you can see that the little balls of pigment 
exploded into multiple colors. I believe, not 100%, but I believe if you get a red color burst, it's red. So you get more predictability with it. I do believe you're correct. Okay. It's been a long time since yeah. I played with those. Yeah. So this one is a spritz and drop. Okay, so you sprayed water on this one first. Yes. Okay. This one I have sprayed on dry. Dry cardstock. And I'm just going to add some water to it. And this is quite the spray bottle. I mean... Yeah, and I overdo it every time. <laughs> so I'm just going to be honest. I use lots of water for my techniques on this. And if it's too much, just take your paper towel or your rag yeah, and I'll just grab. It up. I'll just grab this. I'm just Cool. Ready to rock. Yep. Okay. So there's that. And then let's say I wanted to paint with it. I usually have a water bottle with me, so I'll just add into a well. Just like that. And then if I was using Heather's scooper, I could take just a smidgen. Seriously, I do not need a lot. And I'm going to just yes. drop that in. And now I have a watercolor that I can put anywhere. So what I know, what I will say about the difference between doing it this way and this way. First off, this way I'm going to have to apply it, right? Okay, because I've created this little watercolor powder. This color should come up a little bit more, less modeled. Like, see how that has all those different pigmenty colors in it? I should sort of have... A one color once you've diluted it you're kind of mixing that all up right so now I'm gonna have there we go see get a nice wash of it so it's a right. it's a nice blend versus where the pigment blend is still sitting absolutely there. yeah so again there's a you know so I will actually if I'm sitting down with my Lindy's create myself a little palette and then like Heather did stamp on something so like the vellum oh yep and then I can use it as just paint, watercolor paint. And I do highly recommend that you heat emboss so that it kind of creates your... Um, it's a little damp. It stops it, is, it from exactly. going out. Yeah. yeah. It prevents a lot of that. So. Yeah. Anyways. Lots of water is better. Yeah. Did some painting with them. Yeah. Now, let's take some of this. Okay. We're going to move it down. And please, again, I'm going to reiterate this. When you're playing with this product, please clean your surfaces of all the powder because... Oh, stain Arama. This is totally super pigmented. Very pigmented. And you don't want to be working on our next project, which is a pretty white card with some right? detail stamping. And then you go to wipe something, but you've missed a fleck of powder. Yep. And then you bring it on to your project. Yeah. 100%. We're, we're, we're saying this gonna... because we've been Well, there. we've learned this <laughs> from doing... Yeah. Learn from our mistakes. So this is just a pigmented leftover um, splotch of love splatter. That's look at that. So why not just pick it up, right? right? And then, like with any kind of ink or whatnot, if you continue to mix while it's wet, it will blend. But if you wanted to dry this in between, you could then layer on you another betcha. color. Yep. So mixing while it's wet will blend it. But mm -hmm. if you want to layer, dry in between. Okay, sweet. Okay. But while this is here, oh, I'll let you do that. Let's just try something. Take that down. She's, she's getting messy. Put on the lid tightly. Oh, yeah. I could spray it, but I could also kind of mix it. Ooh, that color. Ooh, ooh that's stunner. That's a stunner. Right. Yeah, you just... It, it's one of those things, it's like mix, any mixed media, when you're going to get in the mess, just get in the trenches. Just do it. I can always wash my hands. Right. Right. Scrubby soap is amazing. It does take it off your hands. It does. Considering I worked with this stuff, well, a day or so ago, you yeah. can hardly see it. I'm going to just drag my edges through. No. That's glorious. And then you just created a background. Right. Once that's dry, I could stamp on it. I could die cut out of it. Anyways, the options are endless with this. Right. Uh, for sure. So that's another way. So you can create um, on your splat mat, of course. Create custom colors. Create custom backgrounds. And, yeah. Okay. 
So I know you actually worked with stencils, but I was hoping I could show you show. Actually, the one thing I'm just going to show this quick. Okay, you show. If you can see that, can you see that bit of crackle? I used a pretty small stencil. I, in hindsight, I should have used a bigger do? one. So I simply used. What did you do some of my texture opaque paste? Put a little blob down on my squat mat, mixed in a little bit of my powder, and then put it through a stencil. You know, that almost looks And as this rich is, oh no, I didn't use this one. Let me back up the bus here. You know which oh. one I use? Crackle paste. Oh my gosh. That's how I get that really cool texture in there. So now do you know why I have so many of these? Because I can expand other things, right? Right? So quickly and easily. Two products. Cool background. Yeah. And now because this is dry and set, I'm gonna I'm going to spray over this. Oh yeah, yeah. She's and not no, gonna have that reactivation problem because no, she's using because the crackle. No, because it's set. Yeah, yeah, it's set. Great. So earlier today, I know Julia debuted all these fabulous stencils on our on her live this morning, and I said I promised that I would bring them in to show some love with the magicals. So I have to pick one, Heather. Sorry, you know me, Nancy. I gotta do a little wipey wipey here. No, I mean, please do. Make sure we don't smart. transfer our mess. She's a smart one. Well, we have our moments. Well, we all have our moments. Right, right. Okay, so I need to pick one. What do you think? First person who says, which one do you want her to choose? Left or right? What avenue should she go down? I'm gonna choose in 30 seconds. Nobody's choosing Come for on. me. First person. We're waiting. We okay. can't choose because we love everything. Right, Julie. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Julie. All right. So I'm just gonna show start simple and and go. Let's see. Can you do it? Elizabeth. Okay. Okay. Stencil. 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 All right. So the simplest start. Well, hang on. I got 500 ways blasting All through the, my brain in the moment. But of course, I could put this down just like this, sprinkle some over. Why don't I do it? I'm going to grab a different color just for the heck of it. Let's use maple syrup bronze because Canadian. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show. Okay, so that we would use a brush and do the the, the, the the thing that we showed. Okay, but I'm just going to show the value of these brand new awesomeness. Okay, so these are the shakers. Shakers. Shake it up, Nancy. Right, so it's got a little topper. You just open it up and it's going to work like a salt shaker. And I'm just going to spray that around like that. Give it a mist. So what I will do is Ooh. a couple of things. One is I'll leave it. I won't, ah. I won't you leave rush. it to dry. Right. So I won't, but I know that I'm not that patient. No. So I'm not going to completely wait, but I'm just going to leave it to do some soaking into the paper. Oh, look at that. I've got a new pigmented computer. <laughs> anyway, splash on. Anyways, then I'll do this. And then, of course, that the stencil, of course, resists. Beautiful. Right? Okay. So that's one. Oh, my goodness. Good thing these wipe up nice and easy and clean. Well, yeah. So then the next thing that I might do... I'm just going to play off to the side while you, you're doing that. Okay. Okay. Just going to get something started here. All right. So I'm going to tidy up my stencil a smidge. So this one, I'm going to actually moisten. Okay, what I have noticed that's really handy about doing it this way, see what I mean about how they get everywhere? They're like glitter. They get everywhere. So, you know, cleaning as you go does have value. But a little bit of wetness can hold the stencil down just like, like a pixie spray would. Sure. Right? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead... Different color, why not? See, Heather smartly 
taped hers down so it'll be nice and flat. I just used some Best Ever Craft tape, but at home I also use my Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station that has magnets, magnets, and I cut a piece of splat mat that fits, or you can buy a little piece of splat mat fit to size, okay. which is a favorite way. Okay, so I may look at this and I might be happy, or I might want to add a little water. It's completely up to me. I just really want to burst that pigment. That's what I kind of, I call it call a break the pigment. I always picture these little balls of pigment. I picture little balls of pigment waiting to be activated and juiced up. So then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip the stencil and stamp with it on the other side. So very, very mixed media, very But you also used a loose. lot of water. Too, I used a right? ton of water. If you slow down on your water and have a little more patience, it makes it You'll fruits. probably get way more definition, like I did on my first one, right there. Because you can see that's the same thing. Yeah, totally. I just don't have as much cooling and such. No. It's mixed media, just the way it goes. Right? Yeah. That's a beautiful stencil. That's one of the new ones, right? That is one of the new yeah, ones. I love it. Yeah, I might own that now. Probably. Yeah. Okay, so while Nancy was playing with that, I just um, grabbed one of my pre-made backgrounds that I had done with the powders, just a mix of a couple colors. Taped a new stencil over top, the scribbly one. I put down, now I haven't tried this paste with it before. So this is actually the uh, Texture Paste Transparent Gloss, which is actually one of my favorites. Now I'm going to take some of my magicals. I mixed it in there. See what Heather did there? She used the other one. So all of you who asked for left are getting it now. And I'm left-handed, meant to be. Uh -huh. Okay. Cool. So I just made a custom texture paste color. Awesome. So for a lot of people too, like, okay, you know, I love the butters and the paste, and I do own plenty, and I am going to be doing a Stencil Butter 101 class at the end of the month. Yeah, you are. I believe the 23rd, but February 23rd. Friday, February 23rd. Yes. A Friday. But you can also create your own texture paste, stencil paste, by using different um, paste that you own. So this is an opaque one. Like I said, the crackle paste, super fun. All of them. You can customize them by adding your own powder so your mica powders your glitter your whatever you want mm -hmm. really and then just randomly i'll just take it down that's a cool color i like that that's a cool stencil i guess i might own this one now <laughs> I, I think, think it was the demo we... bar but i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to buy it's heather buy now. One. Yeah. yeah well there's more than one you... oh yeah Okay, so I just Hi, Nikki. laid down a little bit of that custom color of um, custom colored transparent gloss. All right. So I've just created another layer to build upon. I like that. Sweet. Okay. Do you have, what else do you have, Nancy? I got another one. Okay. So I was playing around with the different magicals to see what could happen. And this is the one that I was talking about that is really it's called uh, glitz so it's about there's glitzy gold there's silver one of course mine are all mixed up just give me a second there's ritzy rose gold i had no idea you owned like well i mean what be, looks to be all the colors i didn't either <laughs> <laughs> till I, isn't that the way everybody until you go dig something out of your like, stash oh, you're gonna, like gonna, oh I, I do have a few yeah yeah so I thought I was like how does this work on black so this is just splooched just like we did on the mat so as you can see I did uh, three different colors I got a silver and a rose gold and then I even I think worked in some of the some of the other magicals so you can mix and match and play with your colors um, this is just a cool texture that I did, but I don't know if it's picking up on the camera particularly well. And because there's the mica in these, yes, on the black, on dark cardstock, stunning. Yeah. Yeah. 
But what you're going to see there again, what you're going to get is a more subdued sort of color on the black. On the black. Yep. Or if here I put a line of gesso oh. to try to highlight it. So that's going to be an interesting background that I'll work into something later on. But what I thought was cool and why I brought the microwaves, and I could borrow that stencil from you. Yeah. All right. What is the name of the stencil? Because it's so good. It is. Nope. Nope. Not that one. One I was using was called Spring Sprung. Yeah. The other side. Oh, six by six thick, thick thin, thin writing. writing. Okay, so I've got some microglaze on my finger. If I wanted to use the applicator like Heather did, that would be great. But either way, I'm just going to go ahead and put some microglaze down onto my. So microglaze is very oily as it warms up, it gets moving. Um, so yeah, again, another thing you don't need a ton of. Goes a long way. It's I'm a very cool product. Anyway, I'm not sure how easy you can see that is on camera, but I've got kind of a yeah, an, oily, yeah. an oily sheen happening on my cardstock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use some of these glitzes. And I'm going to spray this first. So I'm just going to give this a spray down. Again, I'm using a black Vicky Booten paper, so I'm not worried about bringing my water in. And then I'm just going to take some of the powder, and I'm just going to tap my brush down. Again, I'm working with powders, so safety-wise, if you're not in a, if you're working in a closed room with not a lot, we have great ventilation here at the store, so I don't worry about it as much. But if I was at home, I might want to wear a mask, so it's something to think about. Um, anyways, I can add a couple. It is pretty uh, floaty. Yeah. It is floaty, floaty. So yeah, so then if some is in still in the brush, if I'm feeling like it's having a hard time, I can just knock it off. Knock it, knock it off. Okay, so I could leave that, but I've got these almost mistakes, I would call them, where the powder went in and was just really heavy and heavy handed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let that get nice and wet. And then I'm gonna just start spraying Heather again and moving it around all over. Watch your computer this time. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Maybe it's time for them, somebody to buy me a new one. Anyway, that was a joke, I don't mean that. <laughs> the Distress Microglaze is so cool because it built that barrier there. Hey? Yeah. That is cool. So, just a quick run over. There you go. Let me pick up that one. Oh, it's moving down, yeah. Can you see that? That is very cool. If you don't have microglaze, I'm just going to show you quickly just a little sample I made up. So no, made up. let's get real. You, everybody needs microglaze. Well, they do. They <laughs> do. But I did want to just show you this for the sake of it. I actually used one of the Crafter's Companion stencils that has four panels. So this was nothing. I did, I did nothing there. This one I used, I put through the stencil, I put matte medium through the stencil. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I put the powders on it after, like I let them dry to the side. So I put matte medium on this one. This one was just white acrylic and this one was gesso. The white acrylic definitely resisted a little more than the gesso. The gesso does pick up some tint, but of course differently than the actual paper in the back. So you get this pattern thing going on. Those and then the matte, the matte medium, of course, got it even more m modeled grungy. Sorry. Very cool. There we go. Modeled grungy because it just looked, it just picked up the colors even differently. So it, sometimes what you're mixing it with can 
make a difference. Absolutely. So I just say play, experiment, play, play. play. Those big stencils are cool because then you can use them as is. Um, yeah. We'll trim them down, tear them up. Do well, this is what that's what I'll do. I mean, this is one of those stamped versions. Yeah. Where, so I was playing with it and I just flipped oh, it over flipped onto it the over. paper. Yeah. Um, so I'll cut this down onto some card fronts or something maybe. Um, same stencil. Same stencil, multiple powders. Same stencil, super soupy, multiple powders. <laughs> <laughs> Same stencil stamped. Oh, here's what I, some cool stuff to show too. This is where I just used it as a spray. Very cool. That? Okay, I can show that. That is very cool. So, yeah. So the beautiful thing about, that looks like a printed piece of paper that you just pulled out of like a, of the a stash. stash. Yeah. Yeah. So basically I had a 12 by 12. So I'm just going to grab one of our new 12 by 12s. I'm doing this very randomly. Oh, cool. Good choice. Good choice. So what I do is I have mini misters filled with water ready to go. And then I just open it up and I draw a smidgen. And by smidgen, I mean a smidge. A very smidgen. A little goes a long ways, ladies. Of, of, the, of the powder into my mini mister. So the one thing I can do that kind of helps is I'm just going to give this a quick spray. Very light. I'm not going super heavy handed on this. But what this is going to do is it's going to kind of stick my stencil down to my paper so I'll get less bleed through. So well, I'm kind of using the properties of water and paper to my advantage. Then I've got three different colors. I've got Witch's Potion Purple, Shabby Turbine Teal, and Banff Blue. I just randomly made up some mini misters. And like I said, once I use this up, I might rinse it up and change the colors. So I don't necessarily have a mini mister for every every uh, every one that I have. Right, right, right. Because um, I I'm not I love sprays, but I'm not always using sprays. So I kind of like to come in and out of them. So that gives this frees up my products for other things. But then I just gave it a spray. And of course, when you're spraying. You may want a splat box. Heather moves away. I wonder why. Why did you move away, Heather? Well, I am wearing black and my apron, so ultimately I'm safe. I don't know. I have ways. Okay. So there we go. So I don't rush the pulling of this. Again, I want to let some of that water and pigment kind of find its way into the paper. But as I did before, I can take this one's a little messy, but I'm going to use it anyway. I can just pick up my stencil and just move it over. Oh, I'm not Oh, sh yeah. Sorry, you didn't need my help there. That's okay. It worked. Anyway, so then I can just pick up. Cool. So the less I put on and the less water I use, the less it's going to leak under, right? Yes. So how I did the original one and had it look so perfect is sparing use of the spray. Yes. Okay. So if I were to try this again, for the sake of the camera. I would just stand back. Very little. Mini misters come in handy. <laughs> I always have to look to make sure I'm not spraying myself. <laughs> yes, it's I know. Right, those true. nozzles, you got to pay attention. Let's see how much more yeah. defined that is. 
yeah. it's just a little bit a little bit of spritz. but even this one where I, we 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 worked together i love or <laughs> because of the i do love that double stamp like yeah. actually it's neat yeah and it's just your base layer anyways you're right? build going to build upon it absolutely very cool nancy thanks all right so i think i'll just finish up our demo with just a quick little something Wait, look at us 40 minutes in Time well, flies when you're having fun at the demo bar. Absolutely. Again, thank you everybody that's with us. Put my tin on the splat mat so it keeps moving around. Okay, so quickly here. Um, oh, one other thing I did quickly last night was I heat emboss. You all know too that I love to heat emboss. I love my powders. So I did some gold heating, heat embossing with some pretty images on the Vicky Booten's foundation paper. And then I took my, um, just a real fine paintbrush, wherever I put that, just a fine paintbrush into my powder in my wells and I watercolored my images. Amazing. And they're just really vibrant. You can make them as vibrant or as subdued if you want, as you want, depending on how much water you're using with it too, right? So that, again, like I said, it was heat embossed in gold. And then it becomes a resist wherever you put your powders in your water. So super pretty, super easy. You can make custom little ephemera bits for your projects. And then we have the new indigo blue um, stamps and stencils in. We do have a restock coming and some new items. I chose this stamp set, Victoria Garden. Beautiful red rubber stamps. A lot of you are like, ah, oh, red rubber stamps. Do you know that these Nostalgia. give the nicest images? Julia was working with this one. I, I, mean, I we don't have, have it in stock, we will soon. Yes, that is coming. Look at the detail on that stamp, and it actually comes stamps out like, like that. that. It yes. is amazing. Yes. So on this card front, I just took actually two colors of my interference inks and swiped them down my card panel. When that was dry, which didn't take very long to dry, I used a couple of these stamps um, in an oxide ink along the back just to create a bit of a background. And then some black ones over top. I stamped a sentiment and created the panel. This is ready. And I knew I wanted to pop something up to finish it off. So with the butterflies, there's two different butterflies in here. The first one I did by heat embossing black on the vellum, like I did with that previous card, and coloring it in. And then I fussy cut it out. Yes, I did fussy cut that. Some of you sometimes it's worth it. Can't grasp that concept, but you know, know what? It's fussy cutting it's is worth fun, it, and it's just easy. Yeah. And then I'll be able to pop up some butterflies on there. That is going to be amazing. And then I did the little bee. I painted oh, I him them. in with the yellow. So I'll just show you super quick how I did that because I stamped and embossed another one, the other butterfly. So. Ooh, color choices. They're all so great. Right? Okay, so I'm just picking one of them. I'm going to use my little spoon. You know what the beautiful thing about Lindy's are? And the powders? You're never going to come to a jar and it's dried out because it's supposed to be dry. Exactly. Okay, I put a little bit in my Waka Flower grip mat there. Now I'm just going to wet my paintbrush. Mix it in. I'm just creating some color. I want to break up that pigment in there. I mean, that's so pretty. That's shimmer. And I'm just going to quickly color that in. And I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Because I know, number one, I'm cutting it out. And I know that this black heat embossing is resisting where it does not need to be. Okay. I could let that dry, but I am going to just take a clean paper towel and pick up some of the wet. And I want a different color at the bottom, so let's choose another one. And now I'll do it the other way. Rather than mix it in there, I'm going to pick up, take my wet paintbrush. I should take out some of that other color. I'm going to dip off just a little bit. I don't want a ton of water going in there. And I'm going to pick up the color from the jar and then color it in. Nice. Again, I'm going to pick up some more. Let's 
quite vibrant because I didn't add much water to it. I just wanted to pick it up. Put the paintbrush back in, dab it back down. And then you have a shimmery butterfly. Once it's dry, I'm going to cut it out and I'll pop it up to finish this card. Easy peasy and took like no powder whatsoever. Nice. So right before we went on, I was doing some research and I know we're getting long. But bear with me. I think this is worth it. I haven't even tried this. This is always worth so it. So this is an experiment right now on camera with you that they promised I could do. Lindy's gang. Okay. I was like, Ooh. Lindy's gang. So this in my, um, I can make my own alcohol ink. What? It's true. So this is isopropyl alcohol, 99%. So, you know, last week I did a, a demo on alcohol ink. So go ahead and use the ideas from that. But this combination of Lindy's and isopropyl alcohol, it said that their thing is they said it has to be 80% or above. So in Canada, we can get it at 99%. So that's Behind the you counter, you've got to go ask. you got to ask for, for it. it. Just FYI. That's a true thing. So if I don't have a little scoop like Heather does, what I will often do, this one's called Polite People Purple. And it doesn't even look purple. You cannot, like, that's just weird. But I'm just going to pick, I just pick up a little bit on my brush and just mix it in. So this is with the isopropyl alcohol? Correct. That's what's in there? Okay. Yeah. I'm having a hard time believing that's purple. My... It might have purple Oh, because in it. of the alcohol in it. Maybe it's changed it up. Well, look at that. It's, it's polite people purple. I bet you... Do you have the wrong lid on it, maybe? I might have. I don't know. Anyways, this is a beautiful color. This color... As alcohol ink. Oh, it does change it. Hmm. So let's try here. I'm going to show this. So I had never even heard of this. Yeah. Problem right now is I'm doing this on the fly without UPO paper. Oh. If I'm working with UPO paper, yes. I would be laughing. But I'm just going to do this technique just to get a. Oh, smart. Can you tell? Maybe. Ah, ah, Where are you going? Run away. I want to dip. Oh. Okay. I want to dip. So there we go. That does have that alcohol ink look about it. It does. Oh, so if you're doing this on UPO, it will move and blend like the alcohol like inks. Like alcohol inks would. Oh, that is interesting. Oh my gosh. I'm Actually, going to have to try I'm impressed. that. I'm impressed. So yeah, so if I, when I get this out again, I would get UPO paper because it's non-porous. Yes. And I would get my daubers and daub it on and play. With Al, uh, with Al. Hmm. That would be fun. Interesting. All right. I think we shall leave it there. You want to bring out a couple samples, Nancy? We won't rotate the camera. We can just show off some stuff and say our goodbyes. Um, oh, Yvette just asked me a question here. Yep. Heather, did you stamp your butterfly on vellum? On vellum with VersaFine Black, then heat embossed. Yes, I heat embossed with clear so that the black obviously would show through. And then I used the paintbrush with the magicals to color it in. So that's what I did on that one, and that's what I did on that one there. And then the same concept was used even on these little images here. I heat embossed some gold on the Vicky Boot Foundation's paper and painted them in, watercolored them in with a fine point, uh, fine tip paintbrush and a few colors of magic. Those actually look like something you get out of a big boot ephemera pack. Really? I know, the like colors are awesome. great. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, just that heat embossing, right, just creates such a fantastic barrier for sure. You betcha. Anyways, we... Thanks for joining us and we've been a while. I think we jammed a lot in there though, so thank you so much for joining us today. And yes, thanks so much everybody. We really appreciate your time. Hello, and thank you to everybody that comes for the replay. Don't forget, Magicals are, the Lindy's are 25% off today and tomorrow in store and online, and we will be back in two weeks. And don't forget to drop ideas if you have any for us. Yes, always. Thank you. Always, always. always. always.